Mix the old with the new, you got me. Are you smoking? Are you sipping on codeine? I might be. Pink potion, hocus pocus, yeah. This some nice weed. Body moving in slow motion. I can't wear no tight jeans. Yeah. What's going on, beautiful people? Y'all know what time it is, man. Y'all rocking with y'all boy Ricky Prince right here on 109.3 grams, the pull up. You know what I mean? The open minded, versatile station where we rock out. And if you want to pull up to have a debate or to get something off your chest, this is a spot. You know what I mean? So, anyway, I'm going to get right on into it. Uh, today's episode is about why does evil exist? Um, somebody hit me up in my inbox and you know it was crazy because when the person hit me up it was like you know I want to talk about why evil exists why God take out good people why he let bad people kill good people you know why um bad things happen to little children and things of that nature and you know I was debating on the situation and I was like okay that's a good topic but on to the next but then when I was talking to one of my good friends the other day um they even brought up something about how, you know, in today's time, it's a little confusing or a little disturbing to have children or to raise children in today's time because this world is so cold and cruel and it's a lot of deceit and manipulation. It's just real hard to trust people out here. And, you know, I was like, damn, maybe that's my confirmation and my reassurance right there that I need to speak on that because I have an understanding of that type of um, situation and energy that's out there in the universe. So... You know I'm not the type of person that just say stuff that I know may go over people's heads without breaking it down. So before I can even talk about evil, I got to also talk about the so-called opposite, which would be good. Um, first, we got to understand that we live in a, uh, a world of, great, of two great polarities um, and two great energies. And those energies, those energies are masculine and feminine. Now, we can also call it negative and positive. But the only problem with that is masculine and feminine are different but equal. So what makes you think negative and positive is not the same? For some reason and somewhere along the lines, we done made it up in, my, in our minds that Negative or negativity means not good. That's not always true. In some cases, it represents a lower vibration. In some cases, it represents a higher vibration. And in some cases, it represents an equal vibration of its opposite, which would be positive. Now, we also have two polarities also known as love and fear. Love comes from Source energy, God, the creator, most high, all there is, all that was, all that will be. Um, fear comes from man's belief. Man's belief of another man's authority, another man's story, another man's whatever that makes you feel in fear. Fear comes from Believing what you don't really know, believing in the unknown, allowing something, someone or some place to have something over you based on you not knowing who you really are or your connection into whatever it is that you are afraid of. All there is is masculine and feminine energy. Anything else is a misconception. And those two energies have to exist because it makes up the world as a whole when it comes to inter outer result that's like the three dimensional uh proof of our existence and everything that coexists with us all animals are either male or female all things are either internal and external all things are either up or down left or right representing life or death um I mean, you can go on and on. Go, stop, night, day, yes, no, do, don't, will, won't. You know what I'm saying? Everything has the opposite. But they all work together. Because you can tell somebody, I will be in a relationship with you. But I won't settle for or tolerate this. You see what I'm saying? Neither one of those are negative. Neither one of those are positive. They are exactly them both. 
And it only becomes positive or negative based on who's perceiving what's being demonstrated or said. You get what I'm saying? So I say all of that to say, we live in a world of choices and decisions. We live in a world of being conscious, of being conscious and tapping into your subconscious and your super subconscious. We live in a world of curiosity. We live in a world of experience. And we live in a world, <laughs> most of all, of free will. Mm. Without going into further demonstration, without going into further details, even though I will, that's your answer right there to why evil exists, because we was given free will. And no matter if someone do something so-called good or bad, there's a lesson that is learned out of what's done. You know what I'm saying? There's a solution and a conclusion and some kind of revelation to what was done, whether it was good or bad, which means, in a sense, it was necessary. You know how many people changed their lives around after Nipsey Hussle's death? You know how many people wanted to do something better for the world and the community when Tupac died? You know how many people was touched and hurt and could not understand and really felt like they lost their parent or their best friend when Michael Jackson died? I can go on and on. My point is everyone's death touches everyone because they are connected to us all spiritually. You can easily in flesh. Say, I don't know him, I don't care about them. Oh, well, that's they like, yeah, because you acting out and thinking out of flesh. But when you demonstrating and living proof straight from your spirit and your soul and your spiritual God itself, even though you're operating in this fleshly molecule, it's going to affect you. It's going to affect you because you understand that we are one. Period. And we lost a piece of us. But we didn't lose it eternally, eternal wise. It went back home to source, to source energy. So, you got to think, man. If we have free will, we live in a choice of relativity. We, I mean, if we got free will and we live in a world of relativity and choice, that means anything is capable of being said and done. And God is not going to give you free will. And then come down here and punish you for exercising it. What will happen is you will deal with karma. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have to wear that when it come face you. When it show up at your door stuff. That's why I say judge not. That's why I say thou shalt not kill and others. Because what goes around comes around one way or the other. And it don't always have to be when we think it should show up. It always come when we least expect it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, when you know that life is eternal and death is a transitional or uh, transferring period and it's not one of those things where you perish forever then you understand how it works and how it corresponds with energy vibration and frequency so you know that God don't make no mistakes so when you think about that little girl that got raped or that that great man that was a good leader that got killed and all that you must believe that it was written that way you must believe those people knew something that we didn't know. They felt something we didn't know. God told them something that we don't understand. And you must believe that people have to play roles in this world. This world ain't nothing but a big-ass movie. And all these roles that we play are either roles that we signed up to play before we got here on Earth in a spiritual form or roles that we took on once we got on Earth and got distracted and influenced by other things and forgot about the roles that we signed up for. And the Bible, it says... No weapon formed against me shall prosper. If the Most High know that there are all kind of weapons in this world made by man, and there are a lot of people who lost their life to the hands of those who used weapons to kill people, then that message has to tell you that a person, a person can only kill your molecule, your flesh, your vehicle, but they cannot touch your spirit and your soul. Mm, mm, mm. And that's something that we must know. But people act like they do and be all confident in church. Yeah, ooh, ooh, ooh. 
But when it comes down to losing your life or even thinking about losing your life, you lose all the faith in the world. You get scared. You worry and all that because you don't really understand death. You try to understand death and you try to accept that you can't control what people say or do to you. You know what I'm saying? But in reality, you be death scared, you be worried, you be concerned, and you be out here trying to play it safe instead of taking risk and really taking risk and really living the life that you want to live based on what you want out of life. There's a lot of people that play it safe because they don't want to get hurt or be in harm's way. And sometimes you can't. You can't stop yourself from being home as well all the time. You can be chilling there at the house with your family and never go out and bother anybody in the, in the innocent. I mean, not no innocent, but a random person can just pop up out of nowhere and just feel like they your house is the house that they want to hit a lick at. And the only thing you can say is, oh, we didn't deserve that. What caused that? I don't understand how somebody can come want to rob us. We give back to the community. Let me tell you why they robbed you. Because in their eye, for whatever reason, you look like you had. You look like you was an easy lick or you did something that made them feel like, fuck y'all. This is the reality. And whether we feel like that's a right or wrong reason or not, it is the true reason to them. I tell people all the time, you can't put no cap on love, man. It's people out here who really like, who really love to rob people. It's people out here that really love to rape, who really love to kill, who really love to steal, who really love to lie, who really love to be fake. And it ain't nothing you can do about it. The only thing you can do is not surround yourself around them people and sometimes you don't find out until it's too, too, until it's too late. But at the end of the day, that's why true love is acceptance. Accepting people for who they are because you can't control nothing but you and how you think and how you feel. You know what I'm saying? You got to understand that sometimes these negative situations are needed because we have to have an example of what not to do to become a better us, of what can happen to us or of what can happen to us so we'll know, ooh, I don't want that to happen to me. I don't want to go through that. Or damn, they did that. That's Like you need to feel that. You know what I'm saying? But... Regardless of how you feel, negative and positive energy has always been a necessity and always will be. Just like it is necessary to have that when it comes to your car and its battery. Like the battery cannot operate with just one of those posts unless you just come up with some old futuristic invention because you know your shit. But for the most part, but you need that negative and that positive why, period. For that car to operate like it's supposed to. And it's no different from us. You know what I mean? You got all your little parts in the inside to make the outside molecule that look good or look raggedy run and operate like it's supposed to. And at the core of it all is a negative and a, and a, a positive pulse. A masculine and a feminine energy. And with, within those energies are decisions and choices. And they can be made based on how one think and how one feel and act. Off of those thoughts and those feelings. Because they have the free will to do so. Yeah. That's when you know. That we really do live in a free world. And we really are free thinkers. We just allow ourselves to become conditioned. And uh, distracted by. And illusionalized. By society. And all the people that's in high places. That put things out there in front of us. To distract us in this game of monopoly. Period. So, just keep that with y'all, man, and just understand that in some cases, really in most cases, but I know that's going to go over y'all head, but in some cases, so-called evil, bad, and negativity is necessary. And if it wasn't necessary, it wouldn't exist. Just like the devil. That nigga cannot operate outside of God. Whether that's God himself, his other half, his brother, his friend, his partner, whatever. This nigga means something to God to the point where he keep this nigga alive and keep his energy out there to torment, torture, test, whatever you want to call it to see what you're going to do and how you're going to react and if you're going to grow out of an experience that didn't work for you. So for him to still be, a, be out here and to still be able to be recognized by people whether the true energy of the devil exists or not because at the end of the day you are your own enemy. You understand? The inner me. So I don't really want to put no blame on nobody. You got to take blame for everything. And we'll talk about blame on another episode. But I'm going to end that right here for the day. Just understand that the choices and the decisions that you, made is, that you make is very important. And everything else outside of your control comes from the collective minds who thought, who thought up enough tragedies, enough incidents, accidents, and bullshit events to occur. One love.